I knew I was special. Those were the words of a young Tom Riddle who would become the horrible Lord Voldemort when he first learned that he had magical powers. He spoke in a whisper to his quivering fingers, I knew I was special. And the great wizard Albus Dumbledore heard it and later on communicated it, the story, to a young Harry Potter with this commentary. He said, yes, Riddle was perfectly ready to believe that he was, to use his word, special. For some reason, uh, Dumbledore always sounds like Gandalf in our house. (laughs) All of us have this itch deep down to be considered special. And it has not been helped by the prevailing message of our day. You are special. You are special. You are special. You can do it. You are special. Surely, there is a place to hear this from well-meaning parents and grandparents. I can't help but say to my daughters, you are special to your daddy. But it can be a dangerous message to preach to a young sinner in every avenue of life. There is a specialness worth highlighting, but it is not a specialness that is over and against others, but with others. This is what I mean. There's a specialness as humans and in Christ that we as Christians should appreciate. Not only are we God's image bearers over and against animals and angels, amazingly, but also as redeemed as chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world, as loved at Calvary, as indwelt by His Spirit. We are special together, not over and against each other. And this is important because there is a declaration of you are special that is true and humbling. And there's another one in a different context to different hearts that cultivates pride. In our age of self-focus and self-expression, many of us love to feed ourselves the elixir of, I am special. I'm a cut above others. I can bend the rules when I want, even though others shouldn't. Not only about COVID restrictions. I know better than others. It's a deadly potion. And one of the main ways that God humbles his people and sifts such deadly pride from our lives is by giving us each other in the local church. Many of us can testify to the most humbling situations in life often being in the context of deep commitment to a particular local church, when we are covenanted together with each other to be the church to each other, not just in good times, but hard times. The reason that we covenant in marriage is not mainly for the easy times, for the hard times. It's for the times when you want to just go. And the reason we covenant with each other in the local church, in what we call membership, It's not for the easy times. Anybody can be here in the easy times. It's for the tough times, for the times where your pride is challenged by the difficulty of these relationships. The church is a gathering of strange folk. Unlike any other community that we're a part of in modern life, we choose where we live. We often choose where we go to school. We choose various affinity groups. In the church... The blood of Jesus brings us together, often with many others whom we have very little in common with other than Christ himself. We are not a collection of the world's wisest, most noble, and strongest people. You may remember what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 
Consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, so that no human might boast in his presence. Brothers and sisters, that's who we are, by and large. Foolish, ignoble, weak in the eyes of the world. That God, through his church, might shame the wise and noble and strong. Which means that we can be an odd and challenging collection of folks. And that's just how God means for it to be. We are not a people who are special over and against each other. But in Christ, as his church, redeemed and sustained by his grace, we are special together in Jesus. This reminds us of our need to confess our sins. Let's pray. Father in heaven, forgive us for our low thoughts about your church, your beloved, your special people, others who claim the name of our Savior. Father, forgive us for looking at each other with natural eyes, with the eyes of the world, for seeing folly and weakness when we should see wisdom and strength. Father, we receive your grace in awe as your beloved, your people, special to you, not over and against each other, but with each other. We confess before you our remaining pride and our ache to be special from an impure heart as we confess our sins before you now in the quiet of this moment.